Today, we're editing one of my popular street images from Boston Logan International Airport in Massachusetts. Many people among my community have requested seeing this particular image edited, and being that it's one of my favorites in my collection, I'm actually quite excited to show you all how I went about creating the look that I did for this particular image. So with that said, let's get right into our editing. Normally when I start off, I'll go about changing my profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. Well, for this particular image, I'm actually going to retain Adobe Color. And the reason for that is because, as you saw, it has a little bit more contrast in there than the Adobe Standard. And for this edit, I really want to retain all the contrast. So we're going to just simply keep the color profile. Now, going down in our basic module for our temperature, I want to warm the image up ever so slightly. And so we'll change our temperature a little bit and give it a little bit more warmth. But our tint, we're actually going to leave that at a plus 18. Now going down further, our exposure and contrast, we're actually not changing that either. So there's a lot that's really not changing initially in this image. Because of how this photo was taken, my exposure is pretty much spot on. We're having just a single image, capturing her face, getting it properly lit, while also capturing enough of the detail outside the plane without overexposing anything is a very tough challenge there but I didn't ex overexpose my image too far to where I can't bring my detail back on the sunset, but I also kept the light on her face because I didn't want that to be too dark. Now, if we come down to our highlights, this is where we're really going to start seeing some changes. So because I want to bring in my detail from the sunset on the outside of the plane, this is going to go all the way down to negative 100. So just from that, you see we've already brought back our sky. Now in doing so, we have also lowered the exposure on her face. And we're going to address that later on as well. So going down next to our shadows, we're going to increase this quite a bit. It looks pretty good. And then for our white levels, we'll bring this up ever so slightly. And then our black levels, we're actually just going to leave that at zero. Now for my clarity, we're going to increase that a little bit. And we won't adjust our texture for this either. We're going to keep that the same, dehaze, everything else is going to be the same in our basic module. Next, we'll come down to our tone curve. For my point curve, I'm going to select one of the pre-made presets that I have here. And we're going to use my street curve preset. And so as you can see, our contrast level has significantly changed as well as our lighting here just from the way that I've set my points on my point curve. That's kind of the, the, the results of what we're getting. So just to kind of show you the before and after of where we are right now, that's the look that we have. And just from doing those simple adjustments, it's drastically changed our photo. Next, moving down to our HSL, we want to manipulate a few of our colors here. We're actually not doing that much adjusting like I normally do in some of my other photos that I've edited here on my channel. So for my yellows, we're actually going to move this down a little bit, go a little bit more to the orange side, and that looks pretty good there. And then next we're going to adjust our blue. We're going to significantly bring that over more to the kind of purple magenta. So everything's going to come together, I promise you that. So now for our magenta, we'll actually bring that over a little bit about 40, 40 or so percent. That looks good there. So now for our saturation, I want to bring out some of that saturation because as you can see on her face, it's a little bit harsh and we don't want as much color in our photo. So we'll bring down the orange and we'll also do a little bit of desaturating our yellow. And then I also want to do the same for our magenta and then a little bit of the purple. And that looks pretty good. So the next, we're going to use our color grading tool. Now I'm not going to use it in the way of how the new function of 
color grading goes, I want it to still perform like split toning did. To do that, I change my blending. Right now it's set to 50. We want to bring that all the way over to 100. So now it's going to function like split toning did in the previous versions of Lightroom. Then next I want to switch to the single view mode and we'll start with our shadows. And I just want to bring down my luminance here. And that's the only thing we're going to change there. It's our luminance. And then for our mid tones, we're actually just going to increase our luminance here. That looks good. And then we'll shift over to our highlights and we're actually going to, going to change our hue and saturation here, however. We'll go a little into the sort of reddish yellow hues there and add a little bit of saturation. And then we'll also increase our luminance. And that looks good. So next we'll come down to our details tab. And I just always love adding significant amount of sharpness. I don't know why. Sometimes I don't always go that far. Most times I generally do, but it just depends on how I'm feeling that day of how much I, I add in sharpness. And so we'll mask a little bit of that. As for noise reduction, I'll add about maybe 15% or so. So next we'll come down to our lens correction. And here I just want to enable profile corrections. And there's the lens that we utilize there. And I'm going to bring my vignetting all the way back down. So I don't want to correct the vignetting. I just want to correct for the distortion. So once we have that, we'll come down further. Our transform tool, we don't have to adjust anything there. For our effects, we're going to start our post crop vignette there. I'm going to bring my midpoint all the way down to zero. And then we're going to bring our roundness and feather all the way up to 100. And then we'll come back up to the amount and decrease this quite a bit. That looks good looks really good so now once we've done that come up to the top panel here i want to go to my radial filter and so we're going to start off with one we're gonna do one that's pretty pretty large here we might bring it in ever so slightly and then slim it in and then next adjust for the options that we want here and so for this i want to bring up my shadows and then i want to decrease a little bit of my white level that looks good and then next, I'm also going to decrease some of the saturation here as well. And so as you can see, it took a lot of the color off of her face because we don't want it to be too saturated on her there. And then for our temperature, because I don't want her face to be entirely warm, we're actually going to make it a little bit on the cooler side. So once we've done that, I want to do one more radial filter. And what I actually will do is I will select the one that I already have, right click, and then duplicate. And so with that one selected, I want to hit the invert. And now what that's going to do is, now it's going to adjust for everything outside of where the filter is placed. And so what I want to do here is really increase my contrast. We're gonna bring down shadows here. I'm also going to reset my white level and we'll also reset our saturation. So once we have that, I'll just click on close. And if I wanna make any final adjustments, I might do that. Maybe I want to add a little bit more here on her face at the top. And so what I'm gonna do this time is use my adjustment brush. So I'm gonna take my adjustment brush and let's set auto mask. So that way it doesn't filter into any areas that I don't want to adjust there. So we're going to do just this reason here. That looks good. And we're going to increase our shadows and maybe not so much on our white level, maybe bring that a smidge down, but maybe add a little bit more shadow in there. And then that looks, that looks pretty good. So once we've done that, that's essentially it. We'll do our before and after, that way you can see what we have, or what we started with, and that's the after. Unlike some of the other photos that I've shown here on my channel, this one actually had less edits done. And it's just simply using, you know, some of the filters to really get that effect. And of course, using vignetting. So that's how I went about editing this particular photo. So hopefully this tutorial was very helpful for you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you join me in future videos here on my channel. So until next time, I will see you all in the next video.